Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a fourth generation Ford Thunderbird. Now we all know the Thunderbird debuted in 55 as a sleek little two-seater steel body, kind of Ford's response to the Chevy Corvette. But by 1958, as the Thunderbird grew four seats, became longer, Corvette and Thunderbird went in radically different directions. By 1967, eight and nine, when this fourth generation Thunderbird arrived on the scene, it was a completely different car. In fact, this was going after cars like the, uh, the old Toronado, Buick Wildcat. So Thunderbird grew, Literally in every way, shape, and form. Now, 1967, eight, and nine. This is a nine. Uh, first generation of Thunderbird ever to have hideaway headlights. We see them right here. Uh, previously, all Thunderbirds had exposed headlights, but here we have them in their first iteration on the fifth, fourth generations. And these are made of metal, heavy stuff. I believe these are electrically controlled. But again, these come down and cover over the headlights. Now, a variety of engines were available in Thunderbirds. Uh, in 67 and 68, the 390 uh, was the, uh, the base engine. And then in 69, the 429 replaced all of the FE engines as the one and only engine available in Thunderbird. Now, the 429 is a canted valve engine. Under these valve covers are intake and exhaust valves that are oriented on a, a bit of a cant, if you will. If you ask me, it's Ford's, well, copy of the big block Chevrolet. But again, this engine would grow to 460 cubic inches, but here is the Thunderjet 429, 360 horsepower standard in every Thunderbird. Now, it's a pretty mild engine, hydraulic cam, small valve, small port, torque maker, single four barrel carburetor on all of them. This one is fully loaded. It has air conditioning, which was a pretty expensive option. The power steering cooler right here. Again, a loaded car. And uh, 1969, all Thunderbirds had this engine right here. Now getting into that whole thing, this is collectible automobile right here, August 1999, a great magazine. I love this, it's full of history. And in here they have the story of the fourth generation Thunderbird. And the fourth gen was the first T-Bird with a four door option. There it is right there. Uh, crazy stuff right there, a four door Thunderbird. Who could imagine such a thing? Now keep in mind as early as 58, they were thinking about doing four door T-Birds. But when I mentioned the old Tornado, look at this. I wouldn't believe this if I didn't see it. These are pictures from Ford Styling and it's September 15th, 1964. Is that a Toronado or is that a Toronado? Look at the styling on that, the arches and the wheels, the tapered tail, and it says right here, a rumor apparently true says details of the coming Olds Toronado, which came out in 66, were leaked to Ford in 1964 when designs for 1967 were starting. So believe it or not, this is Ford, not Oldsmobile, doing this. It's crazy to think that such a level of, uh, I don't know, I would say, um, Espionage maybe was playing out <clears throat> in Detroit, but again, the four door T Bird, you know, I mean, about one in three was a four door, the vast majority were two doors, like we see here. Uh, now, this one is a Landau, and we say Landau, see the black vinyl top right there with that sort of uh, fake Landau bar on the B pillar? We see it on this car here, so indeed it is a Landau. No reference to Martin Landau and Barbara Bain from the show UFO, if you remember that in the 1970s, uh, but the Landau refers to the old school moving folding tops and the Landau bars, which are actually the pivot points for the folding top. This is totally simulated, but it's pretty cool. The Landau is a specific model. We'll get to that in a second. But again, this is a fake bar right here. And all of this was about simulation, but a very elegant effect. Now on this one here, something kind of cool. On this generation of Thunderbird, the rear window glass does articulate, but instead of going down, it goes back into the B pillar. So when you hit the power window, this car is completely dead. But if you did, this window would go back into the B pillar, which I can't think of another production application where that was done. They almost always go down or they're fixed where they don't go up or down. Now this one here, we'll just go to the door and see some interesting codes. Body code right there, 65B tells us it's a Landau with bucket seats. About 34% of Thunderbirds got buckets up front and the rest were benches. 11 is the DSO, that's for the Boston sales zone. And the differential, four equals 2.8 to one open differential. I would say when you look at Ford Thunderbirds and Mustangs, a letter is better. When you see a letter in that spot, it means a traction lock differential and posi, sure grip, limited slip, call it what you will. But this one here is the uh, the 280 open diff, so right rear tire is going to boil when you stomp on the honker pedal with that 429 under the hood. But again, inside this one, you can see where the bucket seats used to be. 
Uh, no console here, but again, that body code tells us this was a bucket seat equipped car. And roughly, again, 34% of T-Birds had the buckets. The rest were bench. The instrument panel has the fake wood, big C6 automatic under the floor, heavy duty automatic cased transmission, a great tranny, also used in Boss, well, not Boss 9s, but 428 Mustangs, and uh, it was Ford's muscle car automatic, fully capable of handling 600 horsepower with slight modifications, but again, in this 360 horsepower T-Bird, certainly up to the task. Here's a 1967 Ford catalog for the full line. Here's the big Galaxy right here, but again, 67, 8, and 9, the three years for this fourth generation Thunderbird. And here's the write up, the new four door. And it says right here, completely changed, still completely Thunderbird. Here's the bird story for 67. Two elegant new two doors and an historic first four door. And there it is. And here, of course, in 67, they talk about the 390 and the 428 as options. But again, by 69, the FE motor was gone. All of these were the 385 series 429. On the right, we see here Thunderbird's new rolling lock feature locks all doors automatically when the car speed reaches eight miles an hour. That was an option, seldom seen, kind of problematic. But again, that hideaway headlight grill on that T Bird right there looks like a big electric razor coming down the road. Kind of scary, very intimidating. But again, the blade styling, the, if you look at the fronts of the fenders right there, the sort of suitcase effect, very much inspired by Olds Toronado. Crazy but true, all the uh, in internal espionage and leaking of design secrets. You gotta remember too that when this car debuted in 67, the design for this thing was well nailed down in late 64 into 65, because they have to have time to create the tooling, the dies, the subcontractors. So when they launched a car in 67, it was greenlit good two years beforehand. And that's the way it works in Detroit or anywhere in the auto industry. <coughs> now this, the fourth generation T-Bird was also the first T-Bird in history with coil springs at the back instead of leaves. Now those of you who have 58 Thunderbirds will argue you're right. 1958 was the one year when T-Bird went to a four-seater that it had coils in the back. But for 59, they went back to Leafs. The whole point of 58 was it was gonna be an air suspension and they wanted to have the ability for air to be an option so they had to have coils. But beyond 58, this fourth gen is the first time you see coils in the back of any Thunderbird. Kind of took a while, but a softer ride would be the result of that. Details we see here, of course, you know, four corner lights, federal mandate after 68. This thing is more than a reflector, it has a bulb inside, hideaway gas filler right there. You gotta wonder how many hundreds of thousands of gallons of leaded fuel went into that uh, guzzler right there for this puppy to take flight. At the rear, the Dutchman panel has a vent right there. I'm gonna run around to the other side and we'll see if I can't open the trunk and see what we can find inside of there. <clears throat> I always like to play the game of what's in the trunk. And uh, let's get our a little church key going on right here. And if the lock barrel is gone, you just put this in straight up and down, give it a turn and it should open up. No lock barrel, in we go. Ah, Jimmy Hoffa, nope. <laughs> And again, we see that medium blue metallic always, the underside of the trunk's the most uh, guarded and protected part of any car. The underside of the hood sees the fumes and the heat from the engine, but the trunk, well, lives a gentler life. On this one here, we see the unusual, astonishingly deep trunk well on full-size Fords. And again, this shares a lot of its bones with the LTD, the full-size Ford, certain structures. And on the other side of that, is the gas tank. So we have a huge deep place right here, very much appreciated if you do any traveling. Like four suitcases can be stacked in this thing right here. Maybe a half a quart of wood if you want to go there too. And here is a studded snow tire. Look at this thing right here. It's a winter mark right there. Now these things right here uh, are illegal to be driven after April 1st in New England, but when you're driving in the wintertime, these things will cut right through ice and make you move forward. And in something as nose heavy <coughs> as a Thunderbird like this, you want those rear tires to dig in and get you going. And that is also probably why the wintertime use, this thing is as rusty as it is. Now here's the deal. On this car when it was new, the price was $4,947 base price, which was a total of $238 more than a Mustang GT500 Shelby Fastback. So imagine that. Whoever bought this car could have bought a GT500 Shelby with a 428 Cobra Jet uh, Coupe and uh, saved 238 bucks. Well, which one would you have bought? I think I know the answer. But with that said, they can all be Shelbys. And in fact, in 1969, there's something like 700 unsold Shelbys. 
Believe it or not, they had to rebadge them as 1970s. The, the FBI oversaw the whole process at Carcraft in Brighton, Michigan. That's a whole other story for another day. But these uh, Thunderbirds, a total of 50,143 of these sold, which was a pretty strong number, showing that not everybody wants a high-performance Mustang, but a lot of people will take a luxurious Thunderbird like this 69 two-door Landau. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give us a like, share this video with your friends, and hit the bell so when you know when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow 